Hey there, e-bike fans. Welcome to part three of the Electric XP versus Bolton Blackbird comparison. And this is the final and last segment of the three-part series. So thank you so much for joining us all the way through this. Hey, just before we get into the video, I just want to go ahead and make a short announcement that we still have the Zoom suspension seat post on the ebikeproducts.com website. If you are getting a 2.0, these are guaranteed to fit both electric 1.0 and 2.0 bikes. And we also are going to be carrying the cell phone holders. Again, we have some add-on parts that we're coming in a few weeks, but you can also check those out at ebikeproducts.com website. Thank you so much. And if again, like any other videos, if you like what you're seeing here, got some good information, please give it a thumbs up, add your comments, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the video. This is going to be super important because we're going to talk about range on these bikes here. Okay, and one of the factors that make range different is, of course, how big the battery is. But of course, the bigger the battery, if you have a bigger motor, it's going to be draining that anyway. And we have two different major differences in the battery instances. So one, the electric XP battery is integrated into this area here, keeps it safe keeps it inside, um, protected, and the other thing is that because of the integration and it having to be in the down tube, it's smaller. Okay, so this battery now, the new 2.0s have a battery size of 9.6 amps. It's a 48 volt battery. Okay, so what the difference is when you're looking at a Blackbird battery, which is big like this, and the reason I have the straps on is this battery weighs about 10 pounds. The whole bike in itself weighs about 60, I weighed it at 66.6 .6 pounds without all the, my add-ons. Stock, right out of the box, I got a scale so that I, before I put anything on it, I knew what the pound, uh, how much it weighed, and I weighed it at 66.6 .6 pounds. On the website, it's 67, so that's really accurate there. And um, the battery itself weighs about 10 pounds. It's like really, I mean, imagine, if you can't imagine, uh, most of you have probably lifted a bowling ball before. It's the weight of a, a light bowling ball. You know, I mean, so imagine putting a bowling ball on your bike. I added the straps because it is a little wobbly and, you know, there is a, I guess, a mount that can actually make it tighter against it. But the way that this tube is rounded so much at the top, the plate doesn't grab it as well. And it just adds a little shake to it. Not everybody has the same issue I do. It may just, maybe just um, this particular one needs to be tightened a little more. But the straps add gives me a lot more peace of mind. The other thing about this battery is that it will run, the bike will actually run with the key and the battery unlocked. So you have to be careful because more and more I'm seeing in the Facebook groups that people have actually had their batteries fall out while they're riding because they forgot to lock it. Many other bikes, you cannot actually start the bike without it being locked in. So just keep that in mind, this battery does need to be locked when you're doing it. But um, in case I ever forget, the straps definitely hold it in. This thing is actually really, it won't wobble. It's like really, really solid in there. So uh, I, it's just an extra, I'm really actually over cautious in everything I do, especially when it comes to stuff that I spend a lot of money on. Um, aesthetically, you can't really see it as much. I mean, you have a camera right up to it, so you're seeing it, but because everything's black, I don't have a problem with it. And even if it came that way, I wouldn't have a problem with it. It doesn't bother me. Like I said, it keeps, for me, peace of mind. But the size of this battery is a 54 volt, 16 amp hour battery. So again, from, uh, now I think my battery is actually a 10 amp hour uh, that came with this bike originally with Electric SP 1.0. The new ones are 9.6 amp. They're interchangeable. You can, um, I, I wrote to X, uh, Electric e-bikes to find out if I could actually, if I got another bike that was a 2.0, are the battery swappable? And they said yes. So they're using different cells from my understanding. They used to have the Samsung cells on, or LG, and they're going vice versa between one or the other. And I've also heard that uh, Samsung has been raising their prices and also there, uh, there might be actually a supply issue with Samsung cells. So that could be one of the reasons why they're doing LG cells are actually very decent. The amp hours, the, that's, that is the size of the battery capacity of it. Does it make a difference in the range? Absolutely. So you're getting way more range or capacity on a battery this size. And of course, that's why it weighs more and that's why it looks so big. Now, if you wanted to integrate it into the frame, that'd be a little difficult. Now, that being said about the weight, these, the bike is about, both bikes are about 65 pounds. I mean, 66.6 .6 for the Bolton, for as big as it is, with as big as all the components, you are paying for better components that are better quality lighter. 
made qualities. When I first got the bike and I picked up the rim on the front tire, it is crazy light. Uh, so that actually is a big factor on it. And the whole bike itself for, you know, if I take out the battery at 50 pounds, it really is quite easy to lift up. It's, it's pretty amazing how light the Blackbird is. Now this bike is solidly built. Okay, so you do have a lot more weight to it. I don't know if it's more steel parts or what it might be, but with its low step through, it is very low center of gravity. It keeps a very strong balance to it. So there's offsets between the two. Now, if you want a high performance bike, you're gonna have to pay for it. Batteries are super expensive. So that's another reason why you're paying more and that's where your value is gonna be coming out. You pay more, you get longer range, you get better battery, a bigger size battery. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's another point. The other thing is 52 volts versus 48 volts. That's how much of the power that comes out of the battery itself. The more power coming out of the battery, the more it can push to the motor. Now there's three parts to the motor power that's coming through, which is called um, the battery, of course, the voltage coming out of there, the, well, how much the motor can actually handle itself. And then what we have is the controller, which controls how much of the flow goes to the, you know, it, it feels the, the pedal assist, it, it feels the throttle, and then it sends the current to the, the motor and then the motor just puts out from there. It's kind of like the brain of the bike, really, of, of how much power comes out. The thing about this electric XP is that it's all integrated in here. A small little controller stuck into here, it, uh, as well as all, it's covered, it's integrated and protected. You know, I mean, the, the Blackbird has its own casing as well on the outside there. Uh, it has air vents to keep it cool because it's like a miniature computer, or it is. It's like, you know, a computer that's controlling everything that's going on. And again, they both actually control what's going on. So if you have more voltage coming out of your battery, so a 52 volt versus a 48, and the controller can handle uh, on the Blackbird, it's a 25 amp controller. It can handle taking that 48 volts. You multiply that by the 25 that's in the back. You can get 1300 watts getting pushed out of this 750 motor. Okay, so this is what's called a peak 750 motor. I mean peak 1300 watt, but it's a 750 nominal, which means it is designed to run up to 750 watts without any problem for long, long periods of time. No overheating, and that's the design of it. That's what it's designed to do, where you will not have to worry if you have everything set to just stay at that nominal 750 watts. So that being said, if you're pushing it to 1300 watts constantly, you know, all the time, and just throttling at full, and you set the, your controller to allow that much to go through, you are essentially overworking your, your motor. I mean, it's the same thing like when people overclock their computers, and you know the, the processor is not made to go as fast as it is pushing out those those things just burn out a lot faster and you know a lot of times they're not covered by warranty as well now it, the extra boost of power is there in case you need it but always keep in mind something like the electric xp has a 500 watt motor that has a max output or a max rating of 800 watts and it can push that out with smaller tires you get that oomph already right off the bat and with the controller being, I'm guessing, I could not find the exact controller um, amperage, but based on math, I'm thinking it's about a, a 15 or 16 amp controller that's in there, like a 16 point, 16 and a half or something. I mean, if it's pushing out 800 watts peak, then that's gonna be about what the amperage is gonna be um, on the controller, which then gives it up to 800 watts on the motor here, which is phenomenal. I mean, a 500 watt motor is actually, for those of us who, um, who don't need extra super torque and power and all that stuff, then a 500 watt with an 800 peak is actually really a great motor to have. But keep in mind, even when I first got, I didn't know about that when I first got the electric XP, I just fully throttled everywhere, at, you know, maxing it out. And the battery, I mean, the bike actually just died out on me uh, on, the, on my first ride. And I'm wondering what happened? I thought maybe it was a defective bike, but what happened is I overheated the motor. So there was a safety on that. And of course, that's not good for the motor. Um, to have it overheat. So after figuring out that's what the problem, it was my error to um, overclock the, basically over boost the, the, the watch and keep it at peak for very long periods of time. I now keep it down you know, to watching how much wattage is being pulled out of the bike. And the same thing goes for, uh, or how much amps are actually coming out current. And the same thing goes for the Blackbird. You know, there are times when I'll push it to 35, but I'm seeing that it's pulling 900 watts plus on, on a lot of times that I'm actually trying to go faster on it. And 
you know, I'll use it because it's, it, it can handle it, but then I'll make sure I bring it back down so that the motor is not just like pushing out way too far. So that's another part that you're going to be paying for a higher controller, stronger controller, so that it can put out more into the motor itself and then get more speed out of the bike there. Okay, so let's see what we're going to talk about next. Okay, since we're talking about motors, I want to go ahead and also talk about the positioning of different motors on different types of bikes. These two bikes are called rear hub motors. There's a motor in the back, it's in the hub of the bike, there we go. But there's also other bikes called mid-drive, whereas motor is actually, and it is actually pulling and helping assisting even the chain. Typically, mid-drives are a lot more expensive, so you're going to be paying a little more for that as well. They have different type of sensors that are built into them to go ahead and push the bike or pull the bike forward uh, when it's a rear versus a, a mid-drive. So that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the different type of rear hub drive or power assistance that you get here. The number one reason I did not want to give up on this Blackbird, even though I knew it was gonna be probably a little tough for me, was what's called a torque sensor. And there is a sensor inside this area right here that feels the pressure of my pedaling. So the harder I pedal, the more the controller sends power to the motor and gets it going. XP, which has a cadence sensor built in, and what it does is it senses how fast, or not how fast, but how much that there is pedaling going on on the backside there. So what that means is it kind of works like an on-off switch for the motor when it senses rotations of the crank. As you're going, you can actually be going uh, at, a, at a flat rate speed and then pedaling with almost no pressure on the chain and that'll make the motor kick in and go because it just knows that you are pedaling. It doesn't matter what speed you're pedaling, it's just kicking into the motor at that point there. Um, so that's something that is a little different. And to me, what I wanted was feel of a real bike with it just being added to what I'm giving. So basically, if I am pedaling and I've had pedal once on a torque sensor and I start to pedal a little bit of pressure, it actually multiplies my pressure by maybe twice as much. And if I do it to pedal assist four, it am amplifies the pressure that I'm putting by four or five times as much. Whereas a pedal assist, basically, it's just kind of like having a secondary throttle. And that's where it's a, it's a lot different in, in feel. It took a little getting used to that part of feeling when you're going actually and rotating through because it just kicks on to whatever pedal assist level you have. So for instance, if I have it on pedal assist one on the electric and I start pedaling, it'll automatically take the bike up to four or five, six miles per hour. And then when I go to pedal assist two, even if I'm pedaling at the same speed, it actually will jump up the bike to like eight, nine miles an hour. And then pedal assist three will jump it up to 15. And then pedal assist four will jump it up almost 20 and then pedal assist five will get up to 25 to 28 miles an hour. I can help the bike, you know, get to those levels by, by pedaling faster, but the motor is only, and the controller is only gonna send out enough power to get to the next level of speed that I want it to. As soon as it hits that speed, the motor cuts out, and if I'm pedaling, that's the only thing that's gonna be keeping it going above whatever level it's set at. So it's a little more difficult, but the biggest thing about that that I felt was if you're coming to a, like a stop and you're slowing down but you don't have your brake or a turn and you're not pulling on your brake and you start to just even rotate your pedal to get into a position where you're not gonna have pedal strike on the ground, the bike will lurch forward. And it's unnatural, you know, unless you're getting used to it, at first it's something that you just need to be aware of that can happen. Nothing's wrong with it. There are so many bikes out there that are using that type of cadence sensor. It's just a magnet that goes through that senses when um, the cranks are passing by certain areas. I think you can see them here. These, these might be the, the, the magnets, uh, like right here um, and right here. So one, two, I think there's six of them that pass through and then there might be a, a sensor that actually, it, it, that senses that, that goes through there. So those, that's a cadence sensor. Um, with this bike here, it is very responsive. As soon as there's pressure, it starts to go. As soon as you let go, it stops. It's like really responsive on that. And that's what I like. It also just feels like a regular um, bike, uh, but just giving me a little more power. It's almost like, I usually tell people, it's kind of like, uh, 
every time that you move your pedal assist up, it actually lightens the bike to a point where it's just taking off the weight because the power is helping you behind it. This is honestly a torque sensor with a hub motor. It's very, very similar in feel, in my opinion, to a hub drive. And because of the power of this bike, it you know people will say you get more power out of mid drive because of the fact that it's actually taking the the strength of the drivetrain as well. But the thing is, if I'm helping it anyway, and the motor is really powerful, I honestly, I mean, I've rented mid drive bikes to see if that's what I wanted, and it's very very similar. It's almost like having the best of both worlds. But keep in mind, you're paying for that. You know, Juiced Bikes just came out with their Rip Current S uh, Step Through, which is a killer bike. If you look at the ad that they just put out there, I highly recommend you taking a look at it if you're looking for. But their bike is more expensive. I believe it's at 2600. I'm not real sure on that. You'd have to check on. And they claim it has a torque and cadence built in. And I, you know, Bolton just says this is a torque sensor, but I really believe that it actually might have a cadence sensor in it because when I'm pedaling. Uh, without pressure being put on, I do feel it pick up when I'm holding the throttle. So I think it's a combination of everything, which is, it'll boost the power on it, just the way I like it. And it's all controllable, but because it's still torque, it just does it basically on how much I am pushing on it. And it's very responsive. So it's a, I don't know, I mean, I gotta find out more. Bolt in if you guys are hearing this, I'd love to hear what you think, uh, if that is right or not, or if it's just in my head, but it is really a great, system to have and I'm so glad and that's gonna be one of the hard things to really give up on this as well is to get that feel because I like the feel of a natural bike ride and it gives me that you know a lot so that's uh, basically the drivetrain area besides the fact that this actually has an S Rav X5 this is a really really good um, drivetrain it, it shifts so smoothly all you know everything combined in it the way that it moves through i just i absolutely love it it's so smooth now there's like i said this is a very functional shimano turning um drivetrain it doesn't it, it does everything you need i mean it, it's a uh, it, it shifts the way you want it to when you need it so yeah, it's better do you want something that's just a little bit smoother do you need it i mean if if you really care then yeah you're gonna want to spend a little more to have that on it it just comes as part of it the value of this bike like i said all of these high-end parts that are him i would i didn't think i could get a bike like this for at least 29 to three thousand dollars and it is a great deal with all the components that come on it like i said it's like it's pretty amazing on what he he designed uh, when kyle and bolton put this bike together is it perfect no okay this is the first year model there are some things that i think have to be worked out that they're probably working on, on it right now I apologize how dirty this thing looks because it is actually really beautiful when it's cleaned up. But like I said, I just went riding yesterday um, doing some lot of off-road inside the wash and up and down bumps to, to really try to test out my cell phone holders. But that is the second part of this uh, understanding of the different type of bikes that are out there. I hope this has been helpful. Please, if you guys are getting a lot out of this, please uh, like this video so that maybe others who are looking into bikes can see a comparison that actually helps understand what's a what, what they might be looking for a bike and what the different components are and why they might want to choose one over the other these are both great bikes i i would not say you definitely want one over the other um, you want to decide also based on what your budget is you don't want to overspend on these bikes i would not recommend going into heavy debt over them unless this is going to be like your car then maybe you might want to invest a little more than you know the average for entertainment type purposes you know when we buy the bought these bikes we made sure that we're it's not being something that's going to put us into debt at all saved up for quite a while so we're going to go ahead and look into that i mean like i said these were not budget breaking bikes at all these were actually things that we're looking into to potentially use as an investment plus because of the youtube channel and the website that we're selling stuff on they are a tax write-off as well so you know we get the some of it back in our taxes that came out of that uh, that's all things that I considered when I was picking these up. So I just want to go ahead and, and hopefully get a clear idea because I am seeing a lot of people saying, why are everybody selling their bikes? Why is this, you know, what, what, did they buy the wrong bike? Or I am seeing they bought the wrong bike. I, I am seeing a lot of people saying they are intimidated by the bike. And that's another reason why they're actually, you know, selling it. The three top reasons they're selling it. One, they're afraid of the bike. They got it and they can't use it as much anymore. 
because they're just so intimidated by it. They just thought it was, they just, they're, they're fearful of it. One way to get over that is take out the battery, make the bike lighter, ride it around like a regular bike until you, you know, ride around, pedal faster, get some real hours into riding around. Even if it's in your own driveway, just ride it around, ride it around. You'll start to feel more comfortable. When you throw the battery in, you'll start to realize, oh, this is actually a lot more fun because now you know what the bike will do when you turn, when you lean, everything else is already going to be ready for you there. The second reason that I see people are actually selling the bike is again, time. And that, you know, you have to just make the time that you're going to be riding it. If you're going to be doing commutes, that's one thing you want to make sure you consider. And the other, the third thing is they got the wrong bike, you know, as far as step through. A lot of the electric that are being sold now because the 2.0 has been coming out, they're upgrading to the 2.0. So they're selling their 1.0s and then they're also wanting to go now get a step through. Did I make a mistake with getting the Blackbird being so big? Mm, I knew what I was getting into. I didn't know it was going to be that big. I wouldn't say it was a mistake, but, and I don't regret it. Like I said, I'm addicted to the power this thing has. It is so much fun. And this is just a great bike. I just realized that if I am going to recommend this bike to anybody, you should probably be five foot seven, five foot eight or taller. Because even at five five, and I am comfortable being able to lean on one side, if you're not as comfortable in riding a bike, then I would say you probably want to be that height so that you can stand over without any discomfort on that as well. This is a fantastic bike, a lot of power in it. Like I said, torque sensor, the value behind what you get for what you pay is amazing. All the parts are premium uh, on this. The electric XP, same thing. You, what you get for what you pay is absolutely mind blowing. They have by far, from what I can tell, beat the competition in every way and form that these bikes just um, have all the parts that you want to make a really, really great ride uh, based on what your needs are going to be. So if you guys have any questions, I know this is one of those videos that if people have watched all the way through, we're going to get a lot of conversation going on that. I'd love to hear comments. I'm going to be jumping into this particular comment section as much as possible. I apologize. Some of you have been noticing that I'm actually replying to comments that are three months old. They completely missed that section. I don't know what happened, but I'm going back through on my computer and the app on my phone does not give me all of the most recent comments and skips a lot. So when I went on this weekend and I was trying to look through, I said, wow, there's a lot of comments that I've missed from three weeks to about a month ago. And a couple months back. I'm trying to go back through those, but this is one I'm going to hit a lot going into this specific video to answer questions about what bike you should get because there's a lot of people getting into the e-bike niche that want to find out more about it. Hope this video was helpful. If you guys have other bikes out there that you want to make comments on, I am not a bike expert. You know, I started learning about bikes back in March when we, everybody was in lockdown. I was going crazy. You know, I just thought I wanted to get a bike to get out more and then i saw the video called the baby maker and that just got me down the rabbit trail of researching all the different bikes out there and this is what i ended up with i am very happy with my bikes uh well the white is actually my wife's bike but she doesn't ride it so i guess um our bikes <laughs> on that one there uh, again i just need to get her on the bike more often just timing she does, doesn't have a lot of time and think it's a <clears throat> as fun a uh, entertainment function of spending her time on as much as I do but nonetheless these are great bikes uh, any questions again please like subscribe comment below let me know what you think I hope you guys all had a great <coughs> um, lesson as much as I possibly could give on these bikes if there's anything I missed please let me know as well if there's more that I could talk about on these bikes what you want to know more the value behind it if you guys have one of the if you disagree please state your disagreement. I don't have any problem with somebody disagreeing uh, about what I said if you think I'm totally wrong in some of these things because it'll help people get make a better decision. That's the whole thing about this. If your disagreement is dead on and helps somebody, then you know this channel has done its job and I'm very happy, happy for that. Again, I will see you guys in the next video. I, uh, I also, again, we'll be talking about we're going to be relaunching these. We are going to be adding a safety rubber band on here, UV, and then we're also going to be adding on a cell phone safety strap, all going to be added on completely free um, as far as no extra cost to what we're normally selling it on. We are going to be waiting for that. It will probably be in the next four to six weeks, four to six weeks before those come out, but that's the next goal uh, to get those back on because I, again, went off-road with four of them on this bike just to test it out and they worked out great. 
Again, thank you guys for uh, all of your support, all of your comments. I will see you guys in the next video.